this video, we're going to start by doing this for the buggy lab. So, buggy lab. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a look at the case where we have constant acceleration. And we're going to actually compare a couple things um, to come up with the equations that we're going to be using for story problems. So I'm going to kind of give away the ending right now. So if I were to give away the ending, what the ending is, is this. It turns out that when you plot the velocity versus time for an object, the area under the velocity versus time curve tells you the displacement. And I'll just kind of write that off to the side here. So the area under V versus time, which is this graph here, tells you displacement. It's a very weird statement. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of, we're not going to prove it. What we're going to do is we're going to use an analogy to show you that this is a plausible idea. Okay, if you want the real proof of it, you take a calculus class. But this is just kind of an analogy to say, hey, do you accept it for the buggy lab? Okay, good. Now we're going to do it for this other lab without really proving that it, that it um, works. But it's a reasonable sort of thing to go forward with. So here's the idea. If you remember to review the buggy lab a little bit, um, <clears throat> we have a buggy that starts off at some position x naught, and then it travels forward at a constant velocity. And if you remember, the slope is v naught, the constant velocity of the buggy. Um, and we had an equation that described the buggy. The, the equation for the buggy was x equals v naught t plus the initial position. And we got this because we used slope-intercept form to get it. Wonderful. Now, I'm going to do a graph of the velocity of the buggy versus time. And that's going to be a little bit different. So when we plot velocity of the buggy versus time, let's remember, velocity is the slope of the buggy graph from the position. And if you remember, we just said right now, it's a constant velocity, v naught. So what that means is forever and ever and ever, this is a nice flat line. In other words, what we're saying is v naught never changes. So it's flat. And again, that comes back to this idea here. Remember in the previous unit, we, we remember that the buggy never speeds up or slows down. And this is another way of saying it. Now, here's the thing I wanted to sort of do with this equation here. And, and we're going to connect these two graphs now with a little bit of math. So I want you to recall that if I subtract x naught from both sides, um, I will get x minus x naught equals v naught t. And of course, this is nothing more than the displacement. Okay, and again, this part, I'm doing some math, I'm showing you the math, and of course, if you're a first-year physics student, the, the question is, why are we doing this? The answer is, there's a trick here that a smart physicist came up with. I didn't come up with this trick. I'm just passing it on to you now. So here's how this trick works. Delta x is v-naught times t. Very big deal. You've seen that a million times. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to actually now move on and take a look at this graph, and I'm just going to casually observe some facts about it. These are facts that somebody else showed me, and through these facts, I'm going to actually be able to come up with a connection um, that's going to help me come up with some more equations that will be useful when I talk about acceleration, constant acceleration. So here's what I want you to notice. I go from zero... Uh, my my, my y-axis goes from, my v-axis goes from 0 all the way up to v-naught here. So what I'm going to say is the length of this is v-naught. If I look at it as just a shape, the length here is v-naught. And, of course, I go out to some time t right here. So my width here is t. Now here's what I'm going to show you. This thing, this whole curve, is a rectangle. So what I can do is I can get the area of the rectangle as length times width. 
And when we plug in V0 for length and T for width, what we get is that the area is V0 times T. So in other words, it turns out that the area under the V versus T curve tells you V0 T, the displacement of the object. This is true for the buggy lab, and we've actually shown it. Okay, because we have the slope intercept form of the equation that we see before, and realize, oh hey, wait a minute, it looks like these two equations check out. So what I've done is I said, hey, for the buggy lab, if I take v versus t and get the area under the curve, I'm going to get the displacement. Why do we care? Here is why we care. It turns out, just as the buggy lab has an equation that lets you know where the buggy is for all times, there's an equation for objects that are constantly accelerating. And we can actually come up with those equations and solve new problems if we use this approach of let's get the area under the V versus T curve. And that's what we'll do now. So if we have position versus time for constant acceleration, okay, turns out that um, we have a graph that looks like, say, we'll start off from rest and we'll just go like this. Wonderful. Now, when we plot the uh, velocity versus time for such, a, for such a figure or for such a situation, we're going to get a nice straight line as, again, here, if we look at the position versus time graph, remember, we have a very small slope, and that means that V naught is almost zero, and then as we continue, M gets bigger, the slope gets bigger, and that means V increases, and it goes faster. So I shouldn't say bigger, M gets steeper and more positive, and that means V increases, and that means it's going faster. So if we actually plot velocity versus time on a graph like this, we start off with a very small slope using this idea. So we're plotting the slope of the position curve versus time. So what we're saying is we start off slow and we go faster and faster and faster, like that. Now, in class, we talked about the fact that the slope of this line is called the acceleration. And we came up with a similar equation that V equals AT plus V naught. And of course, it turns out that V naught um, is zero in this case. So now here's what happens. Suppose um, I go out to some speed v and I do it in some time t, like this. So I'm going to use the argument from the previous graph and say I'm telling you now just as with the buggy lab the area under this curve gives you the displacement. That was the conclusion that we drew. Without proving it, we're going to assert this same trick will work here. So here's what I will do. I'm going to get the area under this curve. And it turns out that if we get the area under this curve, this height here is V. This time is T. And this is a triangle. So the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. Now, the height, so, so the base, is this time t. The height is this thing v, is this v that we're at, okay, when we look at our coordinate. So the height's v. So we also now, we're going to do a little substitution here. So it turns out the area equals one half times t times, and we now plug in a t, okay. And since v not zero, we just leave it like that. So it turns out that the displacement in this case is one half times a times t squared. That's for this graph. Now, um, suppose. We, and so if we were to actually write the position as time as a function of time, we'd have 1 half at squared plus 
x naught when we do the algebra. So I actually skipped a little step of algebra there. So you're going to actually have to figure out where that comes from. Okay. Now, we could actually do um, the most sort of dramatic case of this. And uh, what I'm going to do in the next one is actually show you what happens when we have an initial velocity and get the equations that we're going to use. Last situation, we're saying let's start off with the speed with a velocity v naught, and our velocity increases in time. And now we want to figure out what the displacement is. So we're at some time t, and I'm just drawing a dotted line, and um, sorry, yeah, at some time t, so that's here. And we are at some at some final speed v. So now here's the trick. And you know what? I didn't draw that well. I don't like how that looks. So let me just kind of back up here. Once again, I'm plotting velocity versus time in the case where I actually have an initial velocity. And again, we obey the formula v equals v naught plus a t. Now here's the deal. What I'm saying is that I have actually got up to some speed v and I've done it in some time t so again this is time t and I've gone up here vertically I'm at some final speed that I'll call v and what I'm saying is that the area under this curve all the area under this display under this velocity curve here, just as before, gives me the displacement. So this whole area underneath here gives me the displacement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and calculate that area. So, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to split this into two pieces. So I have a triangle here and a rectangle here. Now, this is the rectangle and this is the triangle. And the displacement, the area, equals the triangle plus the rectangle. And if you remember, the area, okay, when we translate that back into math, is going to be x minus x naught. And that's going to equal the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. Now, let's be clear on this. The triangle area, let's see, the height here, when I look at this, is going to be when I look at this height, that height is going to be v minus v naught. So that's one half height times base, which is t. And then the width of the rectangle is going to be is going to end up being um, v naught times t, because that's the area of the rectangle. Now, for v, I'm going to do this substitution. So I'm going to get x minus x naught equals 1 half times v naught plus a t minus v naught times t plus v naught t. So, these end up canceling out, and I end up getting x minus x naught equals one half a t squared plus v naught times t. So that finally gives me x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And again, um, this is a little bit tricky. Again, um, for those of you that don't feel comfortable with math, I'm kind of glad I did this as a supplemental lecture. Okay. For those of you that feel very comfortable with math, um, this is a great thing to do. If you're a real calculus student, you realize what we're doing is we're calculating the area under the velocity curve and we're integrating to get position as a function of time. Now, for us in physics, what we're going to do in the videos next time is actually summarize three important formulas. Um, so the formulas that we use in this class, first, v equals a t plus v naught. Second, position equals one half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And the third formula that we're going to use is v squared. If we combine 1 and 2, we'll get a third formula. 
v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a times x minus x naught. 